Hello and welcome to another exercise in watercolour. This time we're going to have a go at an old derelict tractor. Transpose my original sketch onto Saunders Waterford 300 gram cold press. Fairly clear pencil lines. I like to I like to be able to see where I'm going and. Uh, as it, it's not my habit to take the pencil lines out after I finish the drawing, so as long as you don't make them too messy and leave too much graphite on the page, it's uh, it's okay. So I'm just cutting around the main characters at this point with a mix of uh, raw sienna, a little bit of cad yellow and a tiny little bit of orange um, in the mix and so on. I'm using the brush fairly loosely towards the lower part of the painting, and this is to indicate the grass and pasture and so on like that that's been allowed to grow up and around this uh, this old workhorse she's just lying in the uh, in the shade of a gum tree at this point the uh, just adding to that initial wash with a, a little bit of burnt sienna just to uh, get a little bit of a reaction to the the underwash while it's still damp I'll use a little bit of negative painting and so on in the, the lower parts of the pasture in due course. With a situation like this one, you need your drawing to be fairly accurate um, and only provide as much information as you want. Uh, just here, I'm just correcting this. I've got a bit too much water in this wash, so I'm taking a bit of it out. Your drawing wants to be um, pretty faithful to what you want because there are a lot of, a lot of parts to it and uh, um, the drawing is the, is the skeleton of what you're doing. Uh, it's, the, it's the important base start that you do with every painting and uh, there is no substitute for it. So here I'm just using a uh, a grey, just uh, a bit of cerulean blue and a, uh, possibly a little bit of burnt sienna, maybe a bit of neutral tint added in just to give me a grey and just to start to block in some of the areas which are going to need to be darker um, as the painting progresses. A little bit of that raw sienna again just in here, very quite light. Um, and... Uh, Indicating a, a little bit of surface rust and so on that's, uh, that's about on the tractor. This is just a, a slightly richer version. Uh, either burnt sienna with a bit of red in it or a bit of uh, brown matter, uh, which is a lovely, rich, warm colour. And this exercise is one of, of uh, transposition of warm and cool uh, throughout. You can see by comparison with the photograph that we started out with that I haven't put any background pasture or um, trees or shrubs or anything other than the gum tree which I've introduced. Um, I don't see that it needs a great deal more than that because the main object of the painting is right there in front of you. It's this tractor in a fairly advanced state of disrepair. Here I'm just using a little more, a bit of burnt sienna uh, up around the tops of the trees. A little bit of, a uh, uh, little bit of ultramarine in it. Uh, at the top was just burnt sienna. Um, doesn't need any more than that. Here I've strengthened it a bit with some cad blue. Um, uh, not cad blue. What am I talking about? Thalo blue, um, and a little bit of Indian yellow, which makes a, a lovely dark, um, nice, nice foliage colour. Here we, uh, again, just a, a bit of uh, a fairly simple grey. Any grey you like to make through uh, either ultramarine and burnt sienna or, or cobalt, burnt sienna, any blue, any brown uh, or brown or red and so on are going to give you a grey effect. All these areas here, of course, later on will be strengthened uh, by much darker washes as we go along. 
little bit of shade on the, the cowl of the uh, uh, the engine. We just bring in a little bit of this very, very uh, light grey, which is the same mix that you used on the tyres and, and elsewhere, except that we've we've washed it out a good deal uh, to this point. Just a little bit of reinforcing here and there. There's going to be quite a bit more yet. But we want to uh, we want the treads on the on the tyres to stand out. An interesting. Interesting little treatment of angles and things like that. Just reinforcing here, bringing in some darker wash into here, which is only same. Uh, type of grey that we're making. Uh, this time we've probably made it, I think, with the, some Prussian blue and uh, burnt sienna. And we start to make these things quite a bit stronger as they get, uh, go through the painting. As we get further along, we'll make these, make these washes, uh, introduce things like violet with burnt sienna, which makes a lovely dark. Um, and any of the stronger blues, thalo blue, burnt sienna, thalo blue, and Indian yellow, very very strong uh, dark values that we that will uh, incorporate as we go along. Just a small round is the brush I'm using. Um, just an Escoda Perler, about size ten, thereabouts. There's a fair amount of drawing in this this particular study because we we've got to draw in the the uh, the important things like the wheels, like the tractor tra tractor tires, like the engine cowl, and so on. We need to be able to indicate those that that this is the impression that we're trying to convey. Treads on the tires, um, fairly ragged. A gum tree that we'll uh, we'll compose with a few lighter browns, some greys, and so on, and leave a bit of the white white paper here and there. Just a very light, very very light burnt sienna uh, underwash. We're just letting that dry. We can put a bit of the, uh, I imagine, was the paint job, the blue paint job on this uh, this old beast when she was operational. So we just add a little bit more to the, the wheel guards. Use a bit of the same colour to bring down onto the tyres, just for, sh for shadow, not for uh, colour reflection. A little bit of rust, and, and yes, uh, with watercolour you certainly can use your fingers. Um, a couple of very famous Australian artists are very good at uh, uh, using their fingers to brush out one or two areas in their paintings, and it certainly hasn't done them any harm. I've just added a little bit of uh, richer brown mix here, a bit of burnt sienna with a bit of uh, ultramarina just to grey this off a bit and a fairly scratchy sort of a brush stroke here because we're trying to indicate the bark on the trees and so on and we'll bring a little bit of dark into here for contrast again the uh, main feature is the tractor not the tree Here we've got to start to get some some very very strong darks involved now. Um, Prussian blue or um, 
indigo with some uh, burnt sienna, some a little bit of violet, possibly even a little bit of sepia uh, to give me very very strong dark. I don't use black, um, but we do want strong darks for contrast in this uh, in this piece. Not being too specific with the, uh, uh, the marks making up the, the construction of the tractor, but we get most of the effect we want by a fairly ragged brush approach and so on. It's a, it's a ragged subject, so your brush marks should, uh, should reflect some of that. I'll bring some of these marks down into the grasses here in a moment, just with a bit of, a bit of negative space treatment. So we've got variation in the in the uh, the grass that's entwined itself around this uh, this piece of machinery and this dark I'm using here is uh, violet with a bit of burnt sienna in it lovely rich color Introduce a little bit of the same into the tree. Just a few bits and pieces, a bit of shadow here and there. Before we started all this, the paper was dry. We haven't used any large expanses of wet in wet. Um, sufficient uh, transformation of the some of the darker shades into the uh, the grassy area around the back of the tractor, around the back of the tree and so on. Enough to suggest that, that it's uh, uh, sort of ragged pasture and so on. That, I think, tells enough of the story. Again, just a small brush, just to fairly well loaded with a, a good good colour, but not a lot of wash, not a lot of water involved at this point. We're just drawing in some of the finer details, the grill on the tractor. Again, we're just uh, picking out some of the smaller parts of this of the study. It's uh, it certainly isn't an exercise in in putting every mark uh, that you see on the uh, uh, on the sample photograph. It's it's that's not what I'm uh, uh, what I'm particularly advocating. It's my impression of the. Uh, of the old piece of farm equipment introduce a bit of uh, a bit of color into the wheels not for anything else but just uh, perhaps a little bit of balance a little bit of uh, um, a little bit of richness in the in the coloration everything else seems to be working okay with a bit of uh, warm and cool and so on so a bit of that strong red won't hurt Here we're just finding just bits and pieces 
here and there. This study doesn't have uh, any gouache used in it. I've tried to preserve the whiteness of the paper where required. I enjoy painting uh, old farm equipment and old bits and pieces that, that uh, are on farms. They, if, they, if only they could talk, they could probably tell a story or two. But uh, this, this particular tractor must have done a lot of work for, for it to be retired into the paddock. Um, Farmers don't tend to uh, part with the machinery if it's still working and still functioning. There's a few bits and pieces on the tree suggest a bit of a bit of darkness down near the, the base of the trunk. We're getting very close to the end of, a, uh, of this exercise and so on. Um, and of course it's it's always a temptation to try and put that little bit extra into the painting when you think it might need a bit of this or might need a bit of that. A strong suggestion is that when you think it's done, put your brush down. Um, you can come back and have a look at it tomorrow. And that's the end result of our, uh, uh, of our exercise. I do hope you've enjoyed it. It's been fun putting it together for you.